And that's where we are right now. The Seattle Mariners at number 12. Did they take Pacheco? No. I have the Mariners taking Ryan Kusick, right-hander out of Wake Forest. So, yep, another college arm for your Seattle Mariners. Kusick's up to 98, power curveball, sharp downward break, 6'6", 235 pounds, good life on the heater, some arm side ride. The curveball, again, already plus, and he has a harder slider that's a down, kind of a down and away uh, darting slider. So he's got three really good pitches. Uh, he can throw strikes with the changeup. Doesn't move and sink and tail a whole lot just yet, but it's certainly projectable. Uh, so I have Ryan Kusick going to the Mariners at 12. I think Auburn's Richard fit. Uh, Davis, the Louisville catcher, Pacheco, if the club is sold on his maturity, and Georgia right-hander Jonathan Cannon might be in the mix here at number 12 if the draft were today. Uh, I don't see a great fit for Seattle in this scenario, at least, on the infield or even a prep player at this stage. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, if you're getting, if you're going below slot here, I could see Painter uh, working out, or I, I'm probably high man on Solometto. But if you're saving money here, if you're saving pool money, and you're going to be able to spread it out and use it later, I could see Seattle doing that here at 12. But otherwise, there's not a prep player here, an arm or a position guy that fits, unless Marcelo Mayer is here. And again, in this scenario, he is off the board at number eight to uh, to the Colorado Rockies. Um, you know, some of the prep kids, though, they gain steam in like late March and April because some of their seasons don't even start until March. And even when you're in Texas and in Florida and California, that's kind of when like, because scouts like to be able to go, especially cross checkers and the scouting directors themselves, they want to be able to go see a kid at Ohio state, see a kid at Boston college in February and March, and then go see a kid in April down in Florida and be able to compare the players they just saw. So it takes a little while. There's a lot of kind of cross-checking within, you know, an area scout's job. There's a lot of cross-checking, like the scouting director's cross-checking himself. The cross-checker is cross-checking himself as much as he's cross-checking his area scouts. So it takes time to kind of build that up. What are you looking at? What are you watching right now? So you get an idea of the competition. You get an idea of the rest of the class, and then you can really get a good idea. You throw grades on these players, and you compare these players against each other. Hey, I just saw, you know, I just saw Matt McClain. How does uh, how does the kid at the second baseman at Tennessee match up? The scouting director is going to see that. The national cross-checkers are going to see that, but it's going to take some time. They're not going to have a real good idea in mid-March about all that. Uh, the game's just...